uh, Gene, when you were editing this, uh, you've got this incredible journey that culminates in this concert. What were the um, you know, biggest challenges in, in sifting through this footage, finding the story? Finding the story, actually, first I want to say, it, um, the first day, the first hour, I was screening the footage, I started to cry because my father died from bile duct cancer. And as I'm looking at this footage, I say, she's not going to make it. She's not going to make it. How am I going to get through this film? And she made it. Um, yeah, that it was an incredible journey, just go through hours and hours of footage. The challenge is there's so many great stuff. Just this, uh, I'm so privileged to watch so many great scenes that can make it to this film. This, you know, for example, after that New Year's Eve uh, chemo, she actually went to this party. She was dancing Motown music, and I said, there's no way we can put that in the film, because the rights will be incredible. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, just hours and hours. I think the biggest challenge for me was, I was one of those that who never heard of Sharon Jones. And how do you make a film that I knew the Beacon concert came like really late, and what do you do in terms of music? So I went and dig all her albums. I listened to every single song and just sprinkled the music throughout. And the editing room, we were all singing, some of us with better voices, some of us <laughs> off key. And um, for me, I never felt that Sharon wouldn't make it, not for a moment. I always thought she would. So how did the film come to be in the first place? Well, Alex, that beautiful, wonderful manager, um, decided, you know, there should be a film about Sharon Jones. And so he went to VH1, and he spoke to Steve Mintz and Brad Abramson, who we had done a film for called Woodstock Now and Then, about the 40th anniversary of Woodstock. And they said, well, we have just the person for you. And that was me. <laughs> and I have just felt very lucky to have been chosen to do it. And I knew Sharon's music, like 100 Days, 100 Nights. And I just found out I had actually met her a long time ago, and I didn't realize it, um, when Lou Reed was doing Berlin at St. Anne's, and she was singing on stage with him. So, and I didn't even realize the impact that would have on my life. So if, if anyone didn't hear, he was observing the fact that even though this film ends on a, in, in a good moment in Sharon's life, um, you know, it, it could have turned out worse. So uh, can, can you reflect on that? Well, Jean never told me that she thought that, you know, Sharon might not make it. Me, in my enthusiasm and love for Sharon and her positivity and passion, never thought she wouldn't make it. I mean, she would go into the chemo room and all these people would be very sad and everything else. And she was like sunshine. She would talk to everybody. She would sing to them. The nurses loved her. Her attitude was so positive. And she just never stopped. She never stopped wanting to move forward. And for her, being back on that stage again was the most important thing. And she said, if I have to drop and die on that stage, that's what I want to do with my life. Her energy is incredible. And she was a prison guard, so she, you know, she was really strong. And you know, I would watch her play games. I spent a lot of time with her. And she's just had, she had triple the strength that I had, even when she had the chemo. So, it just didn't dawn on me during the course of the filming that something bad was going to happen to her. So uh, were there ever times that she didn't want to be on camera or other people didn't want to be on camera? And, and if so, how'd you handle that? Of course. Sometimes she'd hear that we were coming and she would roll her eyes. You know, not at us, though. And then when we got there, she'd be so perfectly happy that we were there. Uh, and she would do that a lot, like a lot of her friends, okay, we're going to come visit, but, you know, and Sharon would go, no, no, I don't, I don't want to see them, I don't want to see them. They'd come, and they would brighten up her day. Plus, she's the kind of person that doesn't hold anything back. She's very transparent, 
and she wanted her fans and everybody else to know what she was going through. But yeah, she would get sick of us, but she wouldn't let us know. So the well. band would. <laughs> <laughs> and also, they had none of them had ever seen the film um, when we went to Toronto, except. Alex and Austin came in one day, and I said, well, so do you want to see a few scenes? And they said, yes. So they sat down, and we showed them some. And then I get really excited. And so I said, well, do you want to see more? And they said, no, we have to go somewhere. I said, <laughs> OK. And then we all went to Toronto. And Sharon and everybody, they were all really nervous. And um, they loved it. They cried and they laughed and they just really adored it and was so glad that it was made. And that just made us very happy that we could have this film and show how great they are and show what her life is all about and what a remarkable person she is. So uh, he was commenting, not, it, although you say she was always up, that he observed the moment when she rang the bell and finished chemo that it's, she seemed to be in a moment of reflection and, and perhaps uh, uncertainty about what to do next. Well, I think she knew what to do next. She wanted a roast beef sandwich <laughs> as quickly as possible. And she had, always, she had had all that medication, so she was like, you know, still a little bit out of it. And I don't mean that she was always up all the time because, you know, she cried about her mom and she, you know, cried about other things like not, you know, and get mad about the Thanksgiving dinner and really wanting to have that sense of community. And, you know, she wasn't happy all the time and sitting in a room and reflecting. So there were those moments. But overall, she was really positive and really had a lot of energy. But the roast beef sandwich is where she was going. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming to Doc NYC. Thank you. And thanks thank to Jean Shen and Barbara Koppel. Yes, thank you.